Work and Leisure by Holly, Patrick and Leah. The common sense understanding of the relationship between work and leisure include how work and leisure are uh, arenas of meaningful social life with consequences for the organisation of society. Um, people define themselves by their work and leisure. Um, so for example, you know, people who play sport often define themselves by those sort of interests uh, and both drive the economy and are a major influence on cultural life. The amount of time spent on leisure is dependent on each individual person. Individual. There are four main kinds of time. Necessary time, contracted time, this time is usually used for work commitments, committed time and free time. That's generally what's left over and most likely used for leisure activities. Someone generally has is usually directly connected to the question of power. Power is usually relative to, the, to your economic status. Individuals that have higher socioeconomic status generally have more time to engage in leisure activities and are usually cultural omnivores with widespread cultural tastes. Socioeconomic means are usually able to acquire a more highbrow culture. Examples include the leisure activities of polo or maybe car racing. This Participation or understanding leads to this higher, higher social mobility. This comes under Berdo's theories of cultural capital, as leisure activity can be seen as a unique source of cultural capital balance and social inequality. Not all members of society have the socioeconomic means to spend time on leisure. Lack of This means they have lack of cultural experiences and decreased social mobility. Despite this, everybody has an equal op opportunity to compete in 21st century Australia, but leisure is not really regarded as a high priority for those with lower socio socioeconomic backgrounds as they prefer to utilise their time to earn money and provide for themselves. Um, social theory on tourism. So uh, we've got three main theorists. Um, first one is Boston. Um, so Boston says tourism uh, is about escaping the real. And he has a pretty dim sort of negative view on, uh, on tourism. He says how it's about not having to confront reality. An example of this is people going to theme parks when they go away. Um, <coughs> then uh, he also says tourists experience an unauthentic version of the place they are visiting. Uh, so then you've got McCannell. McCannell, uh, McCannell talks about how uh, tourists are looking for authenticity um, and experiencing how people from other cultures live. Um, and he also says how uh, tourist experiences need to be structured due to the volume of contemporary tourism. Um, yeah. And then there's Ari. Uh, he says uh, so the, the tourist he, he, he links tourism to wider social theory um, and processes. So he says how the tourist industry has been impacted uh, by the shift from Fordist to post Fordist production. So the Fordist era are uh, involved. Uh, tourism being treated as a mass product. Um, he says how it's a group experience and it's little customizations or everything's sort of just the standard tourist experience. Um, so you, you'd see people in large tour groups and it was a real family experience. And then post border era, so that's sort of now, um, it's about uh, travel um, instead of tourism. So it's about like a sort of unique in, in individual um, authentic travel experience. Um, and Ari also talks about the contemporary tourist gaze, um, and that's just uh, made up of two aspects, nature as well as um, heritage or history, and they're like the two reasons that people go on holidays um, nowadays. Differences in leisure and workforce. Women are usually unequally represented in the workplace with more men in our Australian workforce than women. Um, the gender pay gap in the workforce as well as women are participating in large amounts of unpaid work in the home. Um, therefore there is limited time to participate in activities outside the work or home, so less time for leisure. Um, it is unlikely so women are therefore unlikely to participate in any leisure activities, um, leading to an unequal distribution of labour. Women face sexual exploitation and harassment within the workforce, um, preventing them from reaching their full potential in the workforce or gaining any employment or just preventing them to feel comfortable. Um, many workplaces are also unsympathetic to women's needs. Uh, a lot of workplaces don't have flexible hours for women who need to look after their children or maternity leave and 
don't allow for parental responsibilities to come before work issues. Um, the social ideologies in society around women prevent them from being able to fulfil a successful work and a successful home life. Um, women are expected to fulfil nearly all child and care raising duties in many parts of Australia. Low levels of education and financial means means that qualification skills and relative experience of individuals are factors that can lead to unemployment and lower levels of leisure time available, perpetuating a stigma in society. We just wanted to look at some of the issues facing women at work and during their leisure activities. These include like the alienating experience women working within the capitalist society, the expectation that women will always take on the emotional labour needs within a workforce due to, the, due to the natural caretaking role of women, like leisure activities not being seen as essential for women, particularly as working women tend to be time poor, and the difficulty in establishing leisure activities that are gender, gender neutral. Thanks so much for listening.